Um, there's a lot to pick into when it comes, or pick apart, uh, when it comes to the, the workers' rights revolution. Um, you just know this had Angela Rayner's paw prints all over it. The, the entire reason that Angela Rayner, you know, desired and craved that position, sorry, position of power as the deputy PM uh, was because of you know, the la landlords are all evil, businesses are all evil, we'll be on the side of workers. Well, but you know when the left have battles that they really don't need to have because everything's kind of working all right? It's in that ballpark. So straight out the traps, early doors, less than 100 days in power, up they come with the new workers' rights revolution. The greatest, most sweeping changes for a generation. An extra nine million staff granted powers to sue their employers under sweeping plans. Uh, this is the the workers' rights bill. Under the shake-up, workers will have the right to take a company to court for unfair dismissal from the first day of their employment. Now, I don't even think you need to be uh, a, a, an employment lawyer an employer or an employee, frankly. I think my 10-year-old could probably work out what the problem might be with that. I had this message from Gary who said, as a small business owner, I'm in favour of most proposed changes. However, giving unfair dismissal rights from day one is a big mistake. I remember one particular employee who, after just three days, had antagonised everybody, clearly with a was a bit of a blowhard who thought he could do everyone's job. So after speaking to him twice about it, I got rid of him on day four. I would have been hard pushed to justify this decision now in an un unemployment tribunal and would have had to go through the suspension and arbitration functions taking up time and money. Surely there's a cooling off period with that one, isn't there? But the bit that really interests me is the zero hour contracts. Can somebody tell me what is so bad about a zero hour contract? You know, years ago when, I, you know, I don't know, the pub landlord was doing the rotor for who's going to work behind the bar that week and we'll have Brenda doing earlies on Monday and Mick's going to come in and do a couple of hours at seven o'clock. He'll be on shift with Sandra. Um, also there, we'll have Pete and Bob on that shift. Gets to Friday, I'll ring them up. Oh, they can't do that slot. He can do that one. She can't do that one. We'll work it all out. I've got a big road, a nice little spreadsheet. And finally, at the end of the day, it's all done. All of those people were on essentially what would now be called zero hour contract. We didn't have a name for it. Uh, people who work part time in shops can't always do the same day. They've got maybe childcare considerations. They might be a student couple of hours here and there is good yet yeah, you ring the boss I'm free on Thursdays can't do Friday this week boss etc what was so wrong with that didn't this just used to be called self-employment basically uh, but now it's a whole different picture uh, but I would be interested to take your calls on this I can imagine if you are a worker that regularly day in day out goes at the same time every day to an an employment a, a place of employment and you've done this for a couple of years and you have no contract and it's always 40 hours and you quite like a little bit of protection i kind of get that but i wonder how many people are actually in that bracket Every, whenever we do a sort of phone in on this I, I tend to hear from people the aforementioned students or people who want some flexibility in their week who will say actually it really suits me rather well to to not have to do uh, a set uh, rotor of hours and I can each week say when I'm available. Lobby groups have called Rayner's uh, plans here uh, to enforce the uh, statutory probation period of at least a year. Um, a bit bonkers, to uh, coin a phrase. You can sue your boss after one day and do so in the knowledge that you have a full contract despite being a casual worker. That's the thing, the casual worker status. How many are full-time versus casual, etc.? There's, there's so much to get into on this. But the zero-hour thing. So if this is you on zero hour contract, uh, a zero-hour contract, then just explain why what you're going through or your experience or your status or your agreement, whatever you want to call it, is so bad that you absolutely desire some kind of firmed-up, contracted hours that guarantee you everything. Certain jobs that make sense. As I mentioned, if you're in something that's clearly demonstrably full time, that should be reckoned. That's a given. But I think if you work for Deliveroo uh, or you've got some, you know, I don't know, bar work, that kind of stuff, 
It was just always referred to as casual labour. That's kind of how it was. It made a lot of sense. What is so bad about zero-hour contracts? So if you are a person that has... Uh, has a zero hour contract, you don't have any contract. If you work zero hours and that's your deal, then is that all right for you? Is it a problem for you? Is it a nightmare? Is it so darn insecure you can't sleep properly? Or is it something that actually pans out rather well on balance? 0344 499 1000. I mean, the workers' rights and, and the inability to be fired um, from day one just seems all shades of wonky to me.